What's up, everybody? This is another episode of Jukebox TV. We got a great one today. I'm here with, I'm here with a um a goat, a legend, and um an entrepreneur, uh, a business owner, a songwriter, CEO, whatever you name it, he that hustler. You know, um, there's not too many people on the on the like on the streets like that's really that's really monetizing their crafts and, and really and really um you know like reaping the benefits of of really having these these establishments on paper and, and seeing a residual um income coming back their way and he one of them people who really monetize it monetizing it and taking it to the next level but we had with Nate um Red Rum NTG you know What's up with you? Same shit. What's going on, people? How y'all doing out there and all that good shit? You know, I'm chilling. Yeah, so to give everybody, you know, uh, um, the origin of your story, where you from, where you come from. I mean, I really don't need no introduction. I've been doing this shit for 20 plus years. But for the youngins and the ones who don't know, Originally from back east side Somerville. My original squad, Jazzy D on the cut, my partner Wreck. Three the hard way. That's where it all started. Back Somerville in, in, in Fat Manny basement. Uncle Manny's playhouse. You know? Then we took it to the house parties. After the house parties, I, I made it known that there wasn't nobody fucking with me. You know what I mean? Freestyle, written, whatever. So, you know, from there I started taking that shit a little more serious. Doing my little mixtape. I got out five mixtapes, two actual CDs that were in the store, you know. Uh, you know, I, I started off with the music. So the music was like my, my first love and I, I ran with that, but it seemed like the music changed so much. You know what I'm saying? And with the change of the music, I think I changed as well. And I start wanting to venture out and do books and movies. And But I made sure each... Go check out Surviving Philly on YouTube. Season 1 and 2. Put in Surviving Philly web series. And you'll see what I'm talking about. I also have the book out, Surviving Philly, Part 1 and 2. I also have out the soundtrack, Surviving Philly Soundtrack, Part 1 and 2. You understand what I'm saying? So at this point, my next venture is called The Bad Guy. We're about to get into that once this COVID and the world to break and all that. So we're constantly working, you know. And for me to put out my first book, and make bestseller list in four months, man. Mm. Made me, you know, realize what I'm really capable of doing. Mm. And to see over a million views on my website I mean, and, and, and on my my work, wrote it, directed, started it, the whole nine. You know, to 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 see the reaction of the people is what motivates me to keep going. Mm. And the money, don't get it twisted. <laughs> The money, if, and I want to say this: I know you interviewing me. You ain't asking too many questions, but I want to say this to all my young artists that's coming up, who claim that you're an artist. If you're not BMI, if you're not ASCAP, if you're not associated with any umbrella, if you're not under anybody's umbrella, then you're just another dude rapping on the corner. Mm. And that's facts. When you start collecting revenues, royalty checks, in your name, you're an artist. Until then, you're trying to get where you're trying to get. And I'm not trying to discourage anybody, but I just hope that y'all stop running around here saying, I'm this and I'm that, and you ain't made a dollar. You know? Make a dollar off your work, and then you can brag on it. Break, break. Break it down. What is ASCAP BMI? Um, ASCAP is BMI is business and music. 
and you can become a member of the Business and Music Association, whereas though your name is an entity itself, you understand? So you can step to these big corporations and you can show them that you have credentials. ASCAP is it's a... Uh, publishing job. Yeah, ASCAP is for publishing, it's for it's for uh, anybody who's trying to get their stuff out there correctly. You understand what I'm saying? Not no bootleg shit, none of that. You gotta go through ASCAP in order for you to get your your your, your, your points, your royalties, anything. If not, you're just another dude out here on the street who who, who rap it. And that's just what it is. So, so coming up from from the Philly, you said um, you know Eastside Somerville and all that, and people who from Philly they know you, everybody know you know some that area uptown or whatever. What's what's the backstory of how you how you got into where you was like yo I'm a I'm a I'm a learn the the real business way on how to do this music and get paid the real way because like you said it's a lot of people who do music, but just do it for fun. They never you know what got made, a royalty. I, I, you know what made me decide that I'm going to go and try to do it um, that way because I had several managers in the past. I had a lot of people selling me dreams I, when I was a young boy. You know what I mean? Younger. Oh, I got you. Take me to the studio, running me around in circles, and then we make a couple dollars, and I'm not, post, I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get. And then the shit that's just it. It don't go any further. Now I'm on to the next manager and they playing me and running me around. And just because they put me in the studio, any money that we make, they feel as though I owe them. So I wind up really not getting nothing out the deal. So I said, you know what? Fuck this manager shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to learn this shit myself and I'm going to start pushing myself. I'm going to start, you know what I mean? Figuring out how to... Get it done myself. And once I did that, I start trying to manage people and doing it the right way. You understand what I'm saying? And the more I did it and the more I studied it and the more I, I, I went into it, the, you, obviously, the more you learn. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm to the point right now, you couldn't cheat me. Shit. You couldn't cheat me if you tried your fucking hardest. Because I'm not going to let you. I know my worth. You know what I mean? I know what I'm capable of, and I know what I got coming up next. You know what I mean? It's January. It's a new year. I got so much shit planned that it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And the ones who doubted me before, see, I remember when I first started Surviving Philly, K, I had uh, asked a, a few people to come be down with me. Motherfuckers don't move unless they see you bust a move yourself. So once they seen that first episode pop off, everybody calling my phone now. Oh, what happened to me? I thought you was going to give me a part. I want to be in the joint. What's up? What's up? What's up? Now you see I'm busting moves and you know I'm capable of doing that shit with you or without you. So now you want in. And some of them, you know, I wasn't mad. I let them in. Come on. We got more work to do. You doubted me at first, but now you see the light. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? Because I got two, three more projects coming up. I got three more books that's about to drop in 2021. Mm. Mama's Little Girl. Look out for Mama's Little Girl. Mama's Little Girl is vicious. Look out for Goon. Goon is something that y'all are not expecting to hear or see come from me. It's a whole nother fucking level. And then, like I said, Bad Guy is next. And the Bad Guy is something... It, 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 the, the, they say don't judge a book by the cover Don't judge the story by the title mm. Because once you see the twists And what's going on Look I'm not playing with them no more I'm not playing no more man And my biggest fear is King That I'm gonna fuck around and pass away Or, or some bullshit gonna happen Before I get a chance to show the world How great I really am mm. You know what I'm saying I know what I got planned. I know what I got in store. And, and it's like I want to do it all today. I want to get it all done today. I'm on my Tupac shit. I'm in the studio laying. I'm a, Pac was in the studio laying 15, 20 fucking tracks in two, three hours. 
I'm in the house writing three books right now and at the same time. I'm on chapter 15 of Mama's Little Girl. I'm on chapter 20-something of uh, Goon, and I'm damn near finished the bad guy. Three different gyros, and I never get them twisted or mixed up because my mind is focused. I know what I'm, you know what I mean? So, I ain't gonna talk the head off, but I am gonna tell them this. If you ain't down, get down. Red Rum Entertainment, Red Eye Vision. Check me out on YouTube. Check me out on Facebook, Nate NTG. Check me out on Instagram, Red Rum NTG 55. Check me out on, uh, on, on Red Eye Vision Online. That's my store. You go, you could go through the big cartel or you could go straight through my my site. You could buy books, you could buy apparel, you could buy uh I have hoodies, shirts, I have I have everything on that site. Surviving Philly, uh so 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 much stuff from upcoming projects and just check in. Check me out. Yeah. So what what do you say to to the to people from Philly and how are people, um, you know, how are you with working with other artists and stuff like that? Or if people wanted to audition for upcoming films, what, oh, how do they? Well, you know, I'm, 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 I, I show love. Excuse me on the interview because I'm, I'm <laughs> but I love a Corona. What Snoop Dogg say? When you see a man drinking a Corona, he's never in a rush. You never see a man rushing to drink his Corona. That means he's chilling. Mm. I'm chilling right now, sipping my Corona, smoking. You know, this is just basic shit. But to answer your question, see, that's my one of my biggest things. If you watch Surviving Philly, every artist that I have on there playing a part or playing a... A character on the background I have their music playing you understand what I'm saying I want to expose them I have no problem with working with others because they love to work with me now a lot of people out there they don't want to put other people on because they think they might steal their shine you know what I mean outdo them me I tell each person who comes and work with me give it a hundred and ten percent because if they don't grab me they might grab you. They might like the way you played your role. They might like the way you played the person that you were acting to be and want you to be in one of their projects. I still win. You understand what I'm saying? Because, you know what I mean? So I tell each person, bring 110% to the table every time. So it's always... They did that. So it's always like, you know, I won't say a battle, but... Everybody's trying to be on the top of their game. Mm -hmm. So this little this little past year, this coronavirus shit, you know what I mean, this slowed up my process, but it what it did do is gave me a chance to sit still and write. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of people don't take the time to sit down and write. They just wanna run out here and try to do shit off the top of their head. You gotta have a formula. You gotta you even if it's just your personal formula, you have to have a way that you do things. You gotta plan it, you gotta put it together, and then you gotta work it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta bring that shit to life. It starts off as just a thought. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Once you take that thought, you say it out loud, you hear it in your own ears. It's no longer a thought, it's a reality. Now what you gonna do with that reality? You understand what I'm saying? And with me, once I say, oh, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and I hear myself say it, it's going to get done. So everything you hear me sitting here saying, I already had an interview in the past where I told them, I explained what Surviving Philly was, I explained, this before we even started it. I told them I was going to do the, the web series, uh, the soundtrack, and also I was going to do the, um, the book. The web series done, the soundtrack done, <laughs> part one and two, two seasons of the web series, part one and two of the book. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. 
Now, if I tell you that a duck can lift a fucking truck, you shut the fuck up and hook the duck up. You hear me? <laughs> Let's get this thing moving, man. Mm. You hear me? Yeah. What 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 motivates you? Why why are you so hungry and ambitious? Why why you know you um coming from Philly, it's a lot of distractions out here. How what 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 keep you going and you know what I'm saying like not settling? All right, I'm gonna put it to you like this. My wife passed away early. I, I had little kids that's no longer little. I raised my kids myself. So my kids are my biggest motivation. You understand what I'm saying? My kids love my work. My kids think I'm a star. You understand what I'm saying? And when you get that reaction from your own children from work that you did, it makes you want to do more work and more work. And more work. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of the, the, the stuff that's going on out in these streets, I avoid it simply because of my kids. And then I take what I know and I'll put it in on film. I'll put it, instead of putting it in action out here on the street, running down on nobody and doing no dumb shit like I used to do back in the day, now I can just tell the stories. You know what I'm saying? And make make some motherfucking income off it. So when they get to that point, it's like you know, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. I can't stop. I can't quit. Cause if I stop, that means I gave up. And what's that telling me? I don't, I don't know how to give up. What's the what's the difference of you know you on um, music and and um, visuals? Um, actually, I prefer doing my music. I love my music. But then you get to a point where, when I said, music changes so much. And I'm, 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 I'm the lost member of the locks. I come up when lyrics were important. Bars were important. Now they're not talking about shit. You ain't got to do nothing but suck a motherfucker dick to get put on. It's, you know what I mean? It's, the, the industry is stupid right now. So what I do is, if you look at any of my work, I incorporate my music. You're going to hear my music regardless. That's my first love. So if it's a scene, any soundtrack that's going on in any movie, movement, anything that I'm doing, best believe my music is still, I'm in the studio now just strictly making soundtrack music. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not even interested in trying to make no album for nobody or none of that right now. Because I think that my movies is going to put me over the edge, whereas though eventually I'm going to get to my music. You feel me? But I never let it go. It's always incorporated in everything I do. Look at it. Look at each episode. Each episode, I put at least three, four of my songs in it. And then dudes throughout the whole city that you probably would have never heard before or heard of before. You're getting to hear them. They're getting their exposure. I done had grown men come to me and be like, yo, Red, I always wanted to do that. I just want to appreciate you. I just want to tell you I appreciate you. Like, I would have never had a chance to, to, to act and have millions of people see me. Like, grown men really came to me and told me, you know, I, 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 I helped them live out their dream. They always wanted to do that shit. So that alone right there make me want to keep on doing it. Now, speaking of that, putting people on, because you, you you have a label too. So talk about how how you put people on the the, the, the real way and really, because a lot of people say they, they, they want to help people, but they never, they never, like, give people deals when they're able to and stuff like that. They... They normally just walk away and, and Listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I understand. That. I'm going to give you two different reasons. See, I have a few artists that I literally have signed to me. Paperwork, the whole nine, they're signed to me. I'm signed to Wildfire Records, Incorporated. We're under the umbrella with Sony Music Group. So I'm under the umbrella with somebody. I'm, I'm in the building. You understand what I'm saying? So I have a couple artists assigned to me. I had artists in the past that I signed to me, paid for studio time, promotions, got these people shows, took them and did, did all type of shit for these people because that's my job. And then they wind up getting locked up, killed, 
just giving up on the game, smoking wet and ripping and running in the fucking street and just, and then I got certain ones that's focused. I focus on the ones who are focused. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So now I got a different thing with me. I'm not signing nobody onto anything. I'm not paying for anything else until I know exactly what it's hitting for. Mm -hmm. And that paperwork don't really mean shit if they don't have no money. How can I sue a broke motherfucker? You think what I'm saying? Mm. And that's the real salty part about the industry. Like, when you're doing it independently, how you gonna sue a broke motherfucker? If I put $10,000 into you on promotion and, and studio time, and you don't give me back that in return, what I got to do? Take street actions and go fuck you up? Go get the burn and, and, and go on that route? Because I can't take you to court because your bitch ass broke. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to pick and choose when you independently out here trying to run a label and manage people. And, you know, I got to get the say-so from somebody else before it's actually official. I can't just bring nobody in the door and say, all right, you on. Mm. I still got to go to somebody and say, I like this person. I think they're capable of bringing in some money. If we work with them, we can get extra. I still got to ask somebody. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Then they got to give me permission. Go ahead and work with them, Red. Then I paperwork. Come on, let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm I'm not too much pressed about trying to. How 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 tough is it working with people like you said? You said you you assign somebody. They may be hot, but they just can't stay out of the streets. Like trouble and stuff like that. Get that's the hard. That's oh. mainly. That's one of the biggest problems. <clears throat> but what about they really? It is it like. What what kind of risk is it? You know, like that's the, that's the person who may, like blow get them up. up out of there or blow up. But you you afraid to take that risk because mm -hmm. you don't know where they gonna be next week. That's you know the what I'm point. I, yeah, that's the point I just got finished trying to make. I done it before. I done invested money. I done did shot had videos shot paid for. <laughs> <coughs> Paid for studio time, the whole nine. Got shows lined up. Motherfuckers don't show up for the shows. You supposed to be opening for this motherfucker and this and that. I'm out here networking. I'm out here doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But then when it's time for you to play your part, you high or you booked or you doing your baby mom got you hostage. Like you not real. You not really trying to do this shit. And you should have told me that before. You know what I mean? I got all invested in you. That's my whole thing, like. Mm. But you know, if you know the game, if you've been in this game, if you've been doing this shit, then you know that uh, it's a shady ass game. It's just like the drug game, man. It's all it's all the fucking same. Everybody's trying to get ahead, and they'll step on your head to get the fuck ahead. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, especially in Philly. You can't get no love in Philly, bro. If you a real artist and you try to come up out of that cocoon and blossom, take your shit on the road, man. Take your shit on the road. Get some love from on the road first, then bring it back home. Let that you see in Philly, like I just was saying earlier about surviving Philly. When I first started, nobody really wanted to be down until they seen it start popping. That's Philly right there. If you start something fresh, Philly not rocking with you until other people give the approval. Yeah. New York say you hot, then Philly on your dick. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. If Atlanta say your shit bouncing, then Philly on your dick. Mm. And that's just how it go. And that's crazy. And that's real. Mm. And you could be from Philly, but you got to go out of your element, go out of your state, go somewhere else. And get the approval of these other motherfuckers so you can come back home and people say, oh, damn, he probably is making moves. Mm. Pussy, I was making moves when I was here. Mm. Y'all ain't want to smell me. But now everybody else smelling me and, and, and you want to get closer to me. Like, get the fuck out of here, cuz. Like, I've been, through, I, I've been through it all, bro. I done been through it all, especially with this shit here. I done gave up so many times. But you know what giving up is in this shit.
It never happens. Nah, no. Nah. <laughs> you always got to reinvent yourself yeah. over and over. You'll talk shit a billion times, but it never happens. Never. Man, I give up. Fuck this that, shit. That's the true creator. Yeah. That's, the, that's, the, that's when it's in you. That's you can't let that you. shit go. That's when it's in you, for real. And I done tried to quit a billion times. Like, That's like telling Patti LaBelle. She too old to still be able to sing her ass off like she do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? People think that it's... See, when you're born with it and it's in you, and you've been doing it all your life, there's no age limit when it stops. But if you grew up without it and you learned it along the way and it's something you picked up and studied somewhere, okay, eventually I can see you putting it down because you found it and you picked it up. Mm -hmm. But if that shit was in you from day one... I think I'm going to be like 85 oh, years old saying raps and shit, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nah, real shit is yeah. in me. Yeah. Writing poems and writing books. It's in me. I'm a wordsmith. I can't imagine the day that I'm going to just get up and say, I'm too old to feel like this. I'm too old to put my feelings on paper and express myself. What? Mm-hmm. What sense would that mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you let somebody else hear your feelings and your pain and they feel that shit so fucking sincerely that, that you know what I mean? I'm, I'm never giving it up. So fuck whoever said, Red, you such and such years old and you suck my dick. That's the, that's the, you know, those are the people who gave up on they Yeah, they gave up on themselves. Yeah, yeah, now yeah, they yeah. want you to give up. You can't ever take that. Nah. You, you know, and, you, and this is monetized. So when you monetize, you always get paid. You always gonna get paid off content. I don't care right. how old, but... All right, so back to talking about, like, surviving Philly. How, you know, that's, we, like, we from Philly. Average kid coming from Philly, you hear that name and you like, damn. I really, you know, because Philly grimy, mm-hmm. Philly, Philly, you know, but Philly grimy, Philly, like, got hustlers. Philly is like, you know, it it, 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 it builds you to be the certain type of boy in the, mm-hmm. around the way, but. You still love Philly. Like, when you leave Philly and stuff like that, you still, like, you miss know, I'm it. from Philly, you yeah. miss it. So, when you hear the, the drone, like, surviving Philly, like, like that, that is so relatable. So, break down, like, why did you write surviving Ki- uh, Philly and why, and, and, and what do that mean to you for real or to somebody else? Like, if I'm hearing that drone surviving Philly, like, damn. Like, I really survived Philly. Like, what is All right, survival? on some real shit. I started writing it when I was booked. I was upstate in Dallas. So, uh, basically, the concept came because I was laying in my cell and I'm thinking about all the shit I made it through. All the shit that it really takes to survive in fucking Philly. Like, motherfuckers dying every day. I know somebody got shot in the leg. Made it to the hospital and died, but I know somebody got hit up all in the chest and lived. You know what I'm saying? So the circumstances behind each person's motherfucking lifestyle and what they're doing is how they survive. But to me, surviving was a whole nother page because it was like, I ain't never really had shit. All I know is surviving. You know what I'm saying? I ain't grow up with no whole bunch of shit. I ain't really start getting shit until I was old enough to get shit on my own. And that's real talk. You know what I mean? And that's why, you know, I refuse to go backwards because I was there before. So to survive is so many different fucking lanes to my story. You know what I'm saying? And if you watch the series, you'll get some of the gist of it. But just off the top of my head, what surviving means to me is being your own man. I don't walk with nobody. I walk alone. You know what I'm saying? Even and My favorite saying is, I'm alone. I'm by myself, but I'm never alone. If you can figure that out, you know what I mean? I keep my girlfriend with me. So you might see me by myself, but I'm never alone. And that's the Philly street in me. So, you know, I, I, I'd rather... I'd rather be a solo act than have to act like I'm down with somebody else or, you know what I'm saying, yeah. act like I'm a certain type of person that I know that I'm not. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's good. I hope that answers your question, bro. No, definitely, definitely, definitely. What's, what's, 
you working on it? I know you said you got the books and stuff like that. And no, we, we doing another, um, we're not doing a web series this time. We're doing a mini movie. And it's called The Bad Guy. So, hour and 30 minute mini movie. And it's called The Bad Guy. And it's coming real soon. Real soon. Yeah. So, and there's a book that goes with that as well. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, there'll be a soundtrack to that as well. You understand what I'm saying? So that's all sell a million copies of the soundtrack, sell a million copies of the book, sell a million I mean, Hey, I'm trying to I'm trying to make some things happen. So so tell these rappers or whoever it is what what is it you have to do to to stay relevant in this game for for so many years? Just the ones who got, who you know, just the artists themselves, like, you know. I mean. Because you're a hustler, like, you know it's, what I'm saying? It's, like, it's, only, it's only one answer to that, King. You cannot be in a box. If you're in a box, you're not going to last. You have to be able to reinvent yourself. You try this and it don't work and you give up, then fuck you. But if you try this and it don't work and you move on to the next thing, nine times out of ten, that next thing might give you the motivation to move on to something else, to move on to something else. You got to reinvent yourself. You understand what I'm saying? If, 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 if the style that you're using is not with, with, with selling right now, you have to be able to switch your style. I'm not saying sell out. Or mumble, mumble rap or whatever. You got to keep up with the times. You understand what I'm saying? But you still got to be you. Like the locks. I keep bringing them up. They always going to be them. They're always going to be hip hop. They're always going to be relevant. You didn't see them change their styles. Ain't nobody mumble rap and they try to be down. They stick to what they know. Because that's what got them where they at. And if they needed to. Every time shit go low, they reinvent themselves and they bring that shit back. They done been the D-Bop, they done been the locks, they done been, you know what I mean, solo careers. It's all about keeping yourself going, mm. keeping yourself, you know what I'm saying? They never beefed, but they just knew that longevity would come more if they broke it down. You understand what I'm saying? If they would have continued on one venture, one venture, that shit would have played out. You got to reinvent it. Okay, the locks is getting boring. Now, now we D-block. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We never broke up. Now D-block getting boring to them. Everybody put out a solo album. Styles P, you put out an album. You, you got to keep on reinventing what you already built. Mm. And long as you can do that, you're going to survive. So talk about, talk about, how, cause in Philly, a lot of people don't want to reinvent themselves. No matter like we two, this stuck in this one way that we don't want to open up and try new new things. So, how can a person like what is it up uh, like? What do you what could you say to a person who just want to stay stuck in their lane because they don't want to do that to grow? Like they don't want to. What Evolve, I say, you know what, what I say to them is, uh, if that lane that you're in suits you perfect, don't come out of it. But if it's not working for you and you're not getting nothing out of that shit, and you're not willing to evolve, you might as well quit. Because now you're running yourself in the circle and nobody don't want to hear that shit no more, and you're not willing to put in the effort to make them want to hear you. You understand what I'm saying? That's what it's about. You gotta keep you gotta keep putting in the effort to make these motherfuckers wanna be bothered with you. And that's just what it is. Nowadays it's a popularity competition. The more people who like the artist, the more big the artist is. And he ain't even saying nothing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that back in the day. So, you know, the times change, shit change. Some people need to change. Some people need to stay in the lane that they was in that got them where they at. Look at Buster. Buster ain't wavered, but he can switch his shit. The match was going on with these young boys right now. He just put out some yeah, shit. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 
yeah. he can come and, and fuck with the young bulls who doing all that sing songy, uh, mumble mouth shit. I mean, he can fuck with them too. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you got to be able to switch your lane. You can't be stuck in one motherfucking spot and think that you're gonna. You know what I mean, that's just self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me, I'm gonna keep on moving. If one lane don't open for me, if that music don't pop off, if this don't pop off, I got a thousand different things that I want to do. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they're all related. So eventually, they're all going to come back full surface. My music is going to be involved. You understand what I'm saying? One way or the other. So I'm not gonna sit here and wait for nobody to say, oh. And then I got, I got, see, and and and, and, and I'm gonna say one thing, and then I'm gonna shut up and let you ask me questions. But I got, I got product just for y'all to know. I got stuff product out on the market right now. I got music out right now that I wrote that y'all don't even know about, and y'all love it to death. Mm. Soon as I put my name on it and say that I'm responsible for it, you fuckers going to start hating. Mm. But long as my name ain't on it, y'all buying it up and y'all loving that shit. Why? Because y'all fucking hateful in Philly. Mm. So I keep my shit, keep on buying it. You don't even know it's my product, but I'm getting paid off it. But if you did know it's my product, you'll say, oh, that shit corny. Fucking nut ass motherfuckers. I'm done with the conversation unless you got more co any more questions. <laughs> but yo, we gonna leave it at that. Shoot, we here with NTJ, Red Rum, the entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Um, Red Eye Vision, baby. Red Eye Vision. Been doing this for years and I already know he gonna keep we gonna keep going and shoot keep putting putting more more crazy crazy history Creative together. For this out. For so what y'all need to look out for me, my brother right here. Mm -hmm. We about to start working on some things together. So mm -hmm. we got a lot coming this year, man. Yeah, it's been it's been a long time waiting, man. It's been mm -hmm. a long time coming for real. Yeah. For it's, real. Well it's time, you know. God don't make no mistakes, it's time. And everybody get their turn is my belief. And you know, if you stay consistent at what you do Eventually, you're going to get where you're trying to go. And that's on me. Yo, y'all be good. Be safe. And put y'all motherfucking mask and shit on. <laughs> Whatever y'all into. Go. Live y'all lives, man. <laughs> Holla at y'all boy. <laughs> <All> right, we out. <laughs> okay.